represent, represent, yeah. Welcome to this new episode of Fact Heist. Today, we will try to explain why we can, sometimes, feel sick while traveling. Motion sickness is a buzzkill condition that affects one-third of the population. And the two-thirds of this third may even experience it in a much more nasty severe way. But nearly all people can be affected when using sufficient motion. Moreover most people will experience this shit at least once in their lifetime. Most people, so stop acting like you was a straight G. And women, for some reason, are more affected than men. Motion sickness can be referred as kinetosis, for all of you scientific lingo junkies out there, but can also be called travel sickness, when it's a matter of being sick while traveling on land. It can also go by the name of seasickness, if shit happens while traveling by boat, it literally can be whatever terrain sickness, as long as you get sick along the way. <laughs> like air sickness, car sickness, lawnmower sickness, reality simulation sickness, spinning motion sickness, centrifuge motion sickness, <laughs> Yes that's a thing, space motion sickness or even now multiverse sickness. The diagnosis of this condition is based on the obvious symptoms. They can commonly include cold sweat, headache, tiredness, dizziness, increased salivation, loss of appetite, nausea and of course, vomiting, aka German foreplay. The cause of this motion sickness thing is either a real or a perceived motion. As a matter of fact this shit happens because of a difference between actual and expected motion. It is commonly established, because there are studies behind, my word is bond, that motion sickness is about mismatched sensory signals, because your senses send different and conflicting messages to the brain. For example, in a car, as your eyes are seeing the inside of the vehicle, which seems to remain still or some shit, but your ear is telling your brain you are moving fast. Because guess what? Your ear is doing more than just earring. For real, for real. In its innermost intimate part, there's a group of structure, the inner ear, which gives us our sense of movement, spatial orientation, and balance. The inner ear contains, amongst others, the vestibular system, this pretzel thing, which is composed of three semicircular tubules, tubules meaning small tubes, that can each sense rotation. There's one tubule harvesting information for each dimension of space, like a human gyroscope, for real for real, and the inner ear shelters also hair lined sacs filled with fluid. Those tiny little hairs, called cilia, detect the fluid's movement, for example, if you lean to any side, the fluid moves accordingly and some signals are sent to your brain, allowing you to orient yourself. And when you move, i.e., when you display some mad dance skills, or some mad Shaolin skills, or any movement actually, the fluid shifts and displace the hairs, getting your brain to know if you're moving vertically or horizontally. And all this organic contraption tells your brain which direction you're moving in, how much and if you've accelerated. And even at what fucking angle. This is like rocket science going on in behind your ear pods. But once in a while, shit can go sideways. In a car, a bus, a land speeder you name it, your vestibular system correctly feels you are moving. But your eyes don't get the memo, especially when focused to an iPhone watching important stuff. Cause I'm a island boy. Conversely, some opposite shit can happen too. When at the world's most immersive film experience, and the animated picture makes a broad sweeping move on the silver screen. That's just lazy writing. In this very case, your eyes are like what a fuck we're moving, while your ear doesn't fall for it and knows your lazy ass is sitting still. This mismatch of signals warns the brain something's going wrong. There are three main types of motion sickness. The first is motion sickness caused by motion that is felt but not seen. Some kind of terrestrial motion sickness or some shit. This one is about car sickness, sea sickness, pretty much the stuff I told you about earlier you know, when motion is felt by the vestibular system, but little or no motion at all is detected by the visual system. The second type of motion sickness is caused by motion that is seen but not felt. This one is happening when the visual system, this whole sight thing you know, detect motion, so movement is seen but almost no movement at all is sensed by the vestibular system. Such kind of flavor is referred to as visually induced motion sickness. For example virtual reality, space motion sickness, or while being at the world's most immersive film experience. Just like that one time, when I had to remove 3D glasses and get my shit together after the first 5 minutes of this gravity flick. Sometimes shit happens, say la vie. The third and last category of motion sickness is caused when both systems detect motion but do not correspond. When you move within a rotating reference frame. I mean like, when in an environment where gravity is simulated with centrifugal force. Haven't done this yet but seems fun. The Coriolis effect causes the vestibular system to sense some motion that doesn't match the motion in sight. And then you ask me, 
but why is there some vomit reflex puto? As a matter of fact, apparently not all scientists agree about that either, but there's some evolutionary explanation. According to the current leading theory, but it's only a theory that that's a table. Yeah, yeah. Um, exactly. And, and uh, that there, there are sense data pouring in, which, which uh, so far have failed to falsify the hypothesis that that's a table. So this sensory conflict theory about neural mismatch states that boat travels or fast-moving vehicles have only existed for a few centuries, which is barely a blink of an eye from an evolutive biology point of view. And I guess you can tell about space travels or IMAX. So nothing was supposed to cause this kind of sensory mix-up during our primate evolution. Except for poisons or neurotoxins or some shit. And because poisons aren't amongst the best things for survival, and enhancing your chance of reproduction, and passing on your genes blah blah. And if you don't agree you can fuck off. Your body has evolved a very radical, and unpleasant, way to get rid of what you might have eaten that might be causing all this batshit crazy neural confusion. And the easiest way to get rid of it all, is to throw it all up. <laughs> So this defense reflex system mechanism against poisoning can be a very useful adaptive tool for survival. But once again, it's only a theory. You serious? This defense system might have been fairly accurate and useful indeed, but only before recent modern history, with advanced transportation, medicine, advent of technology and rise of the machines. Therefore our primitive primate brain didn't get the memo yet. You probably want to know if there can be any remedies. Just use the bag! Well, studies have shown that, for some reason, being immersed in water can highly reduce the effect of motion sickness. Doesn't sound convenient during car rides, just saying. What are you trying to convince me of exactly? That you're as useless as an asshole right here? You can also try to change your stance, or chew gum, don't ask me why. And most common remedies often work mostly for car queasiness only. Things like taking average over-the-counter pills, looking at the horizon in order to make your brain understand that you're moving. Hence restore a balanced equilibrium within your senses, you know I'm saying. But none of that shit ain't totally reliable in case of really real intense motion sickness, you know I'm saying. Therefore don't forget the use, that more research is needed, same old, same old. Just ask this scientician. Uh. And that's it for this episode of Fact Heist, we hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to leave negative, full of hatred, comments in the section below. And don't forget to like and subscribe blah blah. And thanks again for watching. Peace out. I live for hard style baby. Come on, let's go.